Developing Communities of Practice. The Caribbean Leadership Project is on a mission. With funding from the Canadian Government's Department of Foreign Affairs, Trade and Development, this project aims to support the development of a network of adaptive leaders equipped to navigate the transformation of their public services and regional institutions. These goals are being accomplished under five pillars. The Leadership Development Program, support for the creation of an enabling environment in which leadership development can flourish, research in areas of leadership, the establishment of networks for continuous learning and development, and the creation of communities of practice that enhance the project's resource. With the establishment of communities of practice, the Caribbean region can look forward to a network of resource persons who can work collaboratively to address the learning and development needs of the public service. But is it really possible to share and work collaboratively when that workspace is regional? Where the individuals are geographically separated? Can there be a regional community of practice? In response to a special request from the Government of St. Lucia, the Caribbean Leadership Project saw an opportunity to answer these questions. The project agreed to assist the Government of St. Lucia with the Public Service-Wide Learning Needs Assessment. In September 2014, 12 individuals from seven CARICOM countries were invited to take on the task of conducting the assessment. They were diverse professional backgrounds, none had met before, and they were new to conducting learning needs assessments. They were however linked by a common thread, their desire to increase their knowledge and technical skills in the field of adult learning and development. This is the journey of the Regional Learning Needs Assessment Team and their growth towards becoming a community of practice. This is our story. Prior to becoming part of the RLNA team, only three members had prior experience participating in an established community of practice. None of us had worked on a collaborative regional project as was necessary for the St. Lucia Learning Needs Assessment. Yet, after the first five days together, it was evident that there was a connection developing among prior strangers. It was our first introduction to being part of this process. And uh, for me, I was very unsure of what was expected. I, there were very few persons in the group that I had known prior to coming to St. Lucia. But after five days, I am already beginning to feel like I am part of something good, something that is bigger than myself, a network, a community of friends and colleagues. Today, Friday, there is a great level of happiness, knowing that we have accomplished quite a lot. There is a scope that was developed. We have established our purpose which is very meaningful as it gives um, the true picture of what um, is expected of us. The first week we were here in, in September, it was hectic, it was really hectic. It, it, it took a lot of us to, we were individuals. So the uh, journey of that week really helped us to become a team. In the five months that followed, all interaction among the RLNA team was virtual. And after those five months, all 12 individuals describe themselves as members of a community. What might have contributed to our team's development so far? In the words of the RLNA team members, there are many factors working in our favor. Capitalizing on the face-to-face -face opportunities, while refusing to defining the virtual space as an obstacle. Commitment to the work of the team, open dialogue, a shared sense of responsibility, unity of purpose, sharing our knowledge, skills and experience and gifts for the benefit of the team, paying consistent attention to team relationship building. In order to sustain a community of practice, the experience must be a valuable one to the participants. This is what some members had to say about their experience on the RLNA team. For me, it was a very enriching experience. Mm -hmm. um, I think enriching is the word I would use to describe. Experience um, 
unorthodox. Um, the, the approach to this project was, was very weird. Um, started off with a lot of uncertainty and as the group gelled together, we began to see clarity and uh, that approach is contradictory to what I'm used to. Shared experiences, uh, being able to communicate with persons across the region and recognizing that we're not as dissimilar as we'd want to believe. Constant change, it's not one word, but that is what it was. You, you never really had an idea of what was coming, what, where we were going, it was just constantly changing. A community of practice is valuable to its members because of the continuous sharing of knowledge that occurs among community members. There is a shared learning in areas relevant to the subject matter occupying the community. And in the interaction, there is a self-discovery and individual personal development. For me, it's, um, you know, it really put my leadership skills to the test in a number of ways. And secondly, I think my ability to understand persons, understanding the fact that we are not always at the same level all the time. You got to realize the many possibilities when it seems as if there is no possibility at all. And it's just something that forced you to dig deep and to come out with something really good. I have grown quite a bit. I have seen myself coming out or maybe my coming out of my shell being a little more expressive in certain, in certain ways. Writers on the concept of communities of practice speak consistently about the value of diversity in the community. The RLNA team can attest to this characteristic as one of the key contributors to its growth and development so far. The diversity is evident in the myriad of gifts which members bring to the team. I would consider one uh, questioning my um, I don't take things necessarily at face value. Some people would sit back and think things through and before we are able to, to um, provide our contributions and I, I think that is, is one of the, the, the ways I, I was able to contribute to the team effort with. For the members of the RLNA team, the discovery of gifts was a defining moment on both the team and individual levels. In one memorable reflection session, team members were invited to identify gifts they believed each team members brought to the community. Each person was given an opportunity to hear the gifts others recognized in them. At the team level, it helped the team to recognize and celebrate the diversity and the rich resources that were available to the community. At the personal level, it was a powerfully moving, genuine endorsement of our value and self-worth. Being part of a developing community of practice does have its challenges. One which can be overlooked for the Caribbean-based communities of practice is the geographical separation. I think one of the most challenging parts is when we actually went back home. When we went back home, there wasn't that unity that we had when we were in St. Lucia. All of a sudden you had to go back and balance your family, your friends, your work with what you were supposed to be doing and we basically fragmented and our lives at home started to take priority over what we were doing here and at some points we had to just come back together and remember what we were, our actual objective of doing this. The RLNA team, however, had great success using the available information, communication, and social networking technologies. The WebEx platform, Skype, Google Drive, just to name a few. Team members also regularly cited challenges balancing commitments to the team with those related to family and career. Challenges would be to manage the daily requirements of the job and commit to an undertaking like this. What it taught me is the need to be more organized. 
we discovered that overcoming these challenges was possible with honest, open communication, followed by the meaningful support from other members of the team. An environment had to be nurtured, in which any team member could feel safe to speak about their concerns, their discomforts, fears, and struggles. Not just those related directly to the work of the team, but even stressors in our personal and professional lives. And the support that followed was geared towards real, practical relief. Prayer, moral encouragement, advice, restructuring of the team's work, so that even for a little while, we bear a team member's burdens. And of course, there is humor. In the midst of our commitments, this RLNA team found time and reason to laugh and even get into a little mischief. One night we, myself and Trisha, we went down into the, um, to the bar area to have a drink. And she just shoved me into the pool. Um, with my phone, my wallet and everything, she just shoved me into the pool. Um, looking back, it was, it was, it was somewhat laughable. Oh, all right. Let, let me... Let me get the record straight right now. Orville and I, we had a long day here and then we were at the hotel, the music was being played and we decided, let us go downstairs. We went downstairs, we were dancing. So what happens, we were dancing close to the pool. It's not my fault Orville has a problem maintaining his balance while he's dancing, right? So he was dancing, 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 and whoops, he landed in the pool. Now, how can that be my fault? Tell me. Communities of practice are organic. They grow and develop naturally as any organism that has a life of its own. Notwithstanding this, the RLNA team's journey towards becoming a thriving community of practice was enhanced by the presence of two facilitators, catalysts in many ways, Kelly Culver, and Marialina Halshaf. Their guidance and support proved to be key success factors, not only in terms of the team fulfilling the mandate to its work clients, but also in the strengthening of the team itself, thus setting a firm foundation on which a community of practice might be built. Working on the Regional Learning Needs Assessment Team has blessed us with learning gems that we have already taken back to our respective professional and personal environments. Team Reflection Circle. The open recognition of gifts in each other. Stepping back periodically and taking a helicopter view so that we could see the bigger picture and remind ourselves of the importance of purpose in all that we do. And the one nugget that perhaps had the deepest impact on us. Trust the process because that is what I've learned to do. And from, from the time we first met, we were told that we needed to trust the process and allow the process to unfold. And that is what I did. And I, I am happy with, with the, the results. That we have. Trust the process. Trust the process and do the cha-cha-cha. Trust the process and do the cha-cha. <laughs> <laughs> I think that has become the team uh, logo or our motto. We continue to experience the benefits of participating in a regional collaborative effort. The formation of a region-wide network of resources. The establishment of lifelong friendships. Sharpening communication skills. Increased knowledge and skill in information communication technology. All of these are foundation elements of a vibrant community of practice. And in the very near future, the government of St. Lucia would begin benefiting from the collaborative work of the RLNA team. The RLNA team members would like to see these benefits multiplied across public services and institutions. We hope that the experience of this team would help to pave a smoother path for the creation of additional communities of practice. And in that spirit, the RLNA team passes on these recommendations to the Caribbean Leadership Project. Clarity in the beginning. It would have been good to know what we were actually getting ourselves into. 
The people who are involved need to be passionate about what they're doing, and there needs to be if you're going to if you're going to be spread regionally, you need to have good technology to link people. For a community of practice to be successful, there needs to be a high level of trust um, and commitment. It must come from within the community, from within the members. If there is no trust. The community will die on that trial bit. The future. And so this chapter of the RLNA story has come to an end. With the successful completion of the learning needs assessment, another chapter begins, and the journey continues as the team transforms into a practicing community of learning and development professionals. What are our hopes? What do we envision for the RLNA team? The hope I have for the future of the RLNA team is that we evolved, evolve into a community of practice. And I hope that we continue to function that way where we can share information with each other, where we can bounce ideas of each other, where we can come together and, 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 and share one one um one area of or area of interest which is learning and development where we can develop that area in our respective countries and um but my hope is that we don't die a natural death in addition to be doing practical work one of my hope is that we will contribute to the literature um, contribute to the awareness of and developing the competencies and skills of persons out there as it regards to conducting LNAs. I am hoping that we will continue to work together. I think what we have started here has potential. I think what we have started here is just an expression of what we can accomplish as a region. We hope to remain equally committed to personal and team community learning. We hope that the huge potential shown in the RLNA team would blossom into a regional transforming community of practice. We envision this team revolutionizing the practice of learning needs assessments across the Caribbean. We see ourselves becoming a continuously growing pool of professional resources ready and willing to assist all regional public services and institutions in meeting their learning and developing needs. So this was our story. The Regional Learning Needs Assessment Team on its way to becoming a community of practice. With the facilitation of the Caribbean Leadership Project and with our RLNA commitment to help building regional capacity, we encourage, we challenge others like us in the public service and in institutions to come on board. Do you know others who share your passion to learn and practice better in a particular area of learning and development? Begin by getting together, start your journey, and tell your own story. Mm -hmm.